My name is Rochelle Kaplan. I am in the Department of Integrative Physiology. I work in the Integrative Physiology of Aging Lab, and I am currently a graduate student. So our lab is primarily interested in what we call vascular aging, and what we mean by that is in the absence of risk factors or disease onset, even with primary aging, we see a decline in the responsiveness of blood vessels to different signals that normally cause them to dilate and this has been shown to be a risk factor for future onset of cardiovascular diseases. And we're interested in understanding both the processes that underlie those changes with ages and also what we can do to prevent and or reverse those changes. And so we were interested in a process that's called autophagy. And that's a process by which cells re recycle or eliminate damaged components. And so the idea is that with aging, over time, you build up cellular damage, and some of the processes that help clear and prevent the accumulation of that damage decline with aging, and one of the key processes is autophagy. And so we were interested in finding ways that we might be able to augment autophagy with age, and we wanted to find a um, agent that could upregulate that process that we would be able to give to humans. So most of our work we actually initially start and study in a preclinical model and if we see efficacy then we try to translate that to a clinical setting and so this was one such example where there were reports in the literature that this naturally occurring sugar could augment the process of autophagy and we looked in an animal model and supplemented old mice with treelose and found that it did in fact improve vascular function and augmented autophagy in the vasculature. And so based on those promising results, we translated this to a clinical study and it worked out nicely because treelose is a very safe agent against naturally occurring sugar. And so unlike a lot of pharmaceutical drugs that might be able to target this process, there's not a lot of side effects associated with Treeless. Okay, you okay, keep going? Alright, alright, good job. Good job. I'm on 180 now. The idea is that we can, again, look at the responsiveness of arteries to different agents. And by infusing things, we place that arterial line in the artery, and that allows us to infuse things into the forearm at very low doses that only affect the local resistance vasculature in the arm and shouldn't have systemic changes in overall blood pressure and heart rate, which are the big ones because a lot of these act on the cardiovascular system. Um, so the reason of we have those cuffs on, so there's a wrist cuff around your wrist uh, and then a blood pressure cuff on your upper arm as well. And the circulation in the hands, it varies from the forearm in that it's a lot more dependent on temperature regulation. And so it's harder to interpret the findings if you include the hand in the experimental model. So the purpose of those wrist cuffs are to exclude the hand from the model and we can just measure uh, the responsiveness of that forearm vasculature. Uh, the upper arm cuffs are inflated to a point where blood flow is allowed into the arm but not out of the arm and 
the reason for doing that is that we can look at the rate of blood flow into the arm over time, and that allows us to, um, again, measure or that is proportional to dilation of the vasculatures. You know, a lot of the motivation for our work is uh, increasing desire for our aging population to maintain healthy you know, lifestyles. And so a lot of our work is aimed at maintaining health and again, present, preventing disease onset and um, you know, trying to expand that beyond just lifestyle factors. Thank <laughs> you.